What is the number one secret weapon that you can take into your golf game to A, lower your handicap, two, if that makes sense, improve your overall enjoyment, and three, hit generally lower scores? Let's find out, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and this is your first time watching my content, a, I don't usually wear a stupid woolly hat with a bobble on, but thanks Adidas for the hat, keeping the head warm because it is freezing today up here at Huddersfield Golf Club. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, feel free to ring that notification bell and that'll inform you whenever I upload new content. So it's going to go off once a day near enough. I am on Twitter, so if you're on Twitter and you want to connect with me, by all means check out that channel as well. And if you're on Instagram, so am I, so feel free to go follow me on there. Now let's get back to this video, what is the number one secret weapon you can take into your golf game to, like we said, lower your handicap, improve your enjoyment and lower those scores. As always guys, it's a massive deal to me that you're a part of my videos just as much as I am. I want you to comment below. In today's video, I want you to comment, before we even reveal it, what do you think the top secret weapon is to improve your golf, lower your handicap and improve your enjoyment? I think I know what it is. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? Could it be to go and spend an absolute fortune on new golf clubs, a new driver maybe, new Scotty Cameron putter, new Mizuno irons? Or maybe it's to work on the impossible shot when you hit a poor tee shot, you're blocked out and you go and put it on the green. Or maybe it's something else. I'm going to keep you guessing for a few minutes, but I'm going to give you a clue. It doesn't involve money, so you don't need to go and buy new clubs. You can do if you want, but... Okay, so you think you've got me. Drive for show, put for dough. We all need to be able to put to bring the handicap down, enjoy the game and lower the scores, right? You're getting warmer. You see, putting's a really important facet of the game. Sorry, I'm struggling to take myself seriously with this hat on. And we all need to be able to two-put from that distance to keep momentum going. But that's not my top secret tip to help you. Let me explain. You see, there could be arguments for every facet of the game to be a top secret weapon to help you improve your game. Depends what your weakness is, but for me, the one thing that I see most of all that could be your top secret to improve your golf has to be Maybe it's to be really aggressive, hit driver wherever you can, try and overpower the golf course and then you're going to score better, right? No, that's not it either. It has to be. Okay, I'm done playing with you now. It has to be short game. For me, if you build an arsenal of shots around the green that you can rely upon when you need to, when you're under pressure, when you've got when you've got that up and down with your mates for £10, £15, £20. So you're not relying on holding 10, 15, 20 foot putts for par. You can put it to a couple of feet, a couple of inches. That has to be my top secret tip to improve your golf game. You see, anyone can try and overpower a golf course. Well, not anyone, but if you think of past major champions, past legends of the game, Seve, Tiger, Nicholas, Player, all these guys could play, but what separated them from the field, from the remaining pack? It was short game, it was shots like that that put you close to the flag after you hit a good drive. So not only are you overpowering the course off the tee, but you can back it up with the short clubs. Dustin Johnson springs to mind. Dustin Johnson's always been an incredible athlete. He's always hit the ball a million miles and he's always had club head speed that is just astronomical. How did he get to world number one? Working with these things here. Improving his scoring with his shorter clubs, not trying to hit it even further. Not too cold to be finishing them off and putting your hand in the hole. I hear what you're all saying and congratulations, give yourself a massive pat on the back if when you did comment below at the start of the video, I hope you did, you got it right, you said short game. But how can you improve that short game to make it your secret weapon? I'll tell you. 
There's no substitute for spending time on your short game. Just like there, I've hit a decent shot to the green on a par three, a nice nine iron from 140, but I'm gonna drop it at the side of the green. It's winter, I'm not bothered about scoring, I want to improve. If we were talking golf clubs, sorry, still getting used to this woolly hat. If we were talking golf clubs and I said, what's the favorite club in your bag? Leave me another comment below before I tell you what my favorite club in the bag is. And I'll tell you what, while you're there and you've got your keypad out, try and guess my favorite club in the bag. I'll give you a clue, this video is about short game, isn't it? Hopefully you got that right too. My favourite club is my lob wedge. I miss a lot of greens usually, and when I'm practising like today and we've got a lot of time, it's pretty dead out here, I'm gonna go and put myself in some positions that I feel like I need to practise from. I haven't hit a bunker shot in ages. By doing this, I'm making winter golf a lot more productive rather than just getting out here and trying to score, maybe when the conditions aren't suitable. And yeah, absolutely, I hear what you're saying. There's no point practicing short game if maybe the technique isn't up to scratch. So if your technique isn't up to scratch, if it isn't, you will probably know about it. Go see your local PJ Pro, go see your local coach, go see who you work with and have a session on short game. The group in front of us are a little bit slower, they're a four ball, it's not a problem for me. I'm gonna use this time again productively. I'm gonna practice my short game a little bit. Who here would stand on the next tee moaning and groaning because they're being held up? Not me, I use my time productively. I'll play a couple of short game shots. I'll use different clubs. Just because I said 60 degrees is my favorite club doesn't mean that's the only club I'm gonna chip with. I may use a 60, and then I may use a 99 just to make sure I know how to use this club when chipping. Then if I'm ever in a position that I need to use this club in a little bump and run shot, I've actually practiced it on the course where it matters. And you actually never know, by doing that with different clubs, You might even find yourself a new favourite club. Imagine that. My favourite dinner, roast beef dinner. If you're from America and you don't know what that is, either Google it or get yourself to a proper English restaurant and just try it. Yorkshire puddings, beef, mash, gravy. Oh. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna have a roast beef dinner every day for the rest of my life. It might be my favourite, but it's always open to negotiation, isn't it? You never know. I might end up just liking burger and chips. Yeah, they're still pretty nice anyway, aren't they? And if you've just watched my video on how many wedges should you carry in your bag, you may be saying, what a hypocrite. You told me I don't need many wedges in my bag and I should learn to use the ones I have. Now you're telling me to practice with every club in my bag. Well, actually, Both points can tie together. What I'm asking you to do and what I'm claiming will help your game lower your handicap and improve your overall enjoyment is to hone your skills with one club so the technique is there, then become more versatile, then build an arsenal of shots around the greens. So if we had a chipping comp and I threw your golf ball into the bin, you'd fancy getting up and down. One of the first golf coaches I ever had, Richard at Wortley, if you're watching Rich, you'll know exactly where this is coming from, used to practice his short game. And if he didn't get up and down, he'd throw a pound coin into the trees. And then if he didn't get up and down again, he'd throw another pound coin into the trees. That is putting yourself under a pressure which only a real-time game scenario would put you under. And he wouldn't be going around there with just his 56 degree wedge in places that he's comfortable getting up and down. Rich, I always wondered this. If you hold the chip, did you go back in the woods and fish a pound out? Let me know. You see, that was exactly not what to do. I went for the birdie putt. I haven't practiced my short game.
You see there I've played three different chips, well, with three different clubs. Yes, that was a 60 degree shot all day long, but I've tried to play some different shots just to work on a bit of technique and work on a bit of feel. The shot was never a pitching wedge there, but I had a go. Okay guys, that's it from me. I'm James Robinson. I'm here at Huddersfield Golf Club. That one there. If you are new to the channel, make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button, push the little notification bell, and you will know whenever I upload new content. Just like I said, it's pretty much daily at the minute. If you're on Twitter, make sure you check me out on Twitter. And I'm also on Instagram, so check that out too. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I found that enjoyable and also insightful. Make sure to make your short game your top secret weapon going into 2019. See you soon.